this week, Friday, December 8th, at the Staircase Theater in Hamilton, Ontario, where I started comedy 13 years ago, I am returning for my one and only comedy show in Hamilton all year, Comedy Villain, A Night with Black Zeus, featuring my brother in comedy arms, Jesse Singh, the baby goat, uh, absolutely hilarious. Uh, my guy will be doing 20 minutes off the top, and then I'll be doing a headline closing set. I'm going to be showcasing all my new material over the new year and the material that I'm working on for my next album. That'll be amazing. Get your tickets. They're only $20 on Eventbrite. Uh, the link will be down below. The link is in my bio on my Instagram social media feed, aka Black Zeus. The link is it's Eventbrite. Go to Eventbrite and type in Black Zeus. It's my only event currently posted right now. Um, so that's that. $20 tickets. It's already half sold out. Actually, by the time you hear this, there'll be more, more tickets sold. And it's not that many seats. Um, so make sure you cop your ticks and be at Comedy Villain, A Night with Black Zeus at the Staircase Theater, Friday, December 8th, Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Tickets are $20 at eventbrite.com. .ca, whatever. To make you want to move your dancing feet to the rescue. Bow, bow. Here I am. Bow, bow. Want you to know just bow, bow. where I stand now, 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 oh, now, now, yeah. Sun is shining, the weather is sweet. Do, 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 do. What's going on, beautiful people? Cheer, 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 cheer. You can hear my voice is cracking. Yo, what's going on, everybody? I hope everybody's doing all right. Welcome to Black Zeus, the podcast, season four, episode 43. We're making our way through season four. My voice is shot. The studio is empty. I'm sick as a motherfucker. Whatever episode you get today is what you get. Do you understand? So don't be coming at me with no craziness this week. Because I'm giving you free shit. It's free, baby. Uh, but yeah, Dante's not in the studio this week because I that's my friend. And I don't want to get him sick. That's what you do. But I know some of you niggas, bro. I know some of you niggas. You still show up to the goddamn function even though you're sick. I know you niggas. You can hear me. Uh, you can hear my nose. It's running. Okay. I'm not on cocaine. I'm not on white powder. I'm not on the junk. I'm not on the smack. Hey, look. Hey, look. It's my fucking Ethiopian forehead, nigga. What? I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. <laughs> You're going to find out quickly. That the episodes where I'm the craziest are the ones where I'm sick and it's solo dolo, or the ones where I'm like hungry, or the ones where the studio is too hot. Usually overheating studio, crazy Zeus. Also kind of sick, crazy delirious Zeus. So this is going to be a different episode. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. If you're returning to the podcast, welcome back, beautiful people. You too can be beautiful people. All you have to do is come back next week. That's it. That's it. Maybe hit the subscribe button. Maybe hit a like. Maybe leave a comment. Who knows? That's what people do. Not begging, because that's not what we do over here. We're not begging. I'm just saying you could do that to help out. Not begging, though. Um, yo, know, I got to make a couple corrections. Last week's episode started off with a bunch of show announcements. Most of those shows are correct. I actually rescheduled Nubian show. After all that... Brrr, grrr, grrr, um, I'm not going to be on the December Nubian show and the December Nubian show actually isn't even a New Year's Eve show. So first of all, correction on that, 
Make sure if you're in the Toronto area, though, you go support. Nubian Show is on December 17th. So two weeks before the end of the year. Um, but just to recap, this week, Friday, December 8th, at the Staircase Theater in Hamilton, Ontario, where I started comedy 13 years ago, I am returning for my one and only comedy show in Hamilton all year, Comedy Villain, A Night with Black Zeus, featuring my brother in comedy arms, Jesse Singh, the baby goat, uh, absolutely hilarious. Uh, my guy will be doing 20 minutes off the top and then I'll be doing a headline closing set. I'm going to be showcasing all my new material over the new year and the material that I'm working on for my next album. That'll be amazing. Get your tickets. They're only $20 on Eventbrite. Uh, the link will be down below. The link is in my bio on my Instagram social media feed, AKA Black Zeus. The link is it's Eventbrite. Go to Eventbrite and type in Black Zeus. It's my only event currently posted right now. Um, so that's that. $20 tickets. It's already half sold out. Actually, by the time you hear this, there'll be more, more tickets sold. And it's not that many seats. Um, so make sure you cop your ticks and be at Comedy Villain, A Night with Black Zeus at the Staircase Theater, Friday, December 8th, Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Tickets are $20 at eventbrite.com. .ca, whatever. Uh, December 15th, the Storefront Gallery and Arts in Etobicoke. That's just outside of Toronto. I will be there December 15th. 15th december 16th comedy all-stars at comedy bar west in toronto that's at ozington and bloor uh fire show i think that's a later show um so december 16th i'll be at comedy bar for comedy all-stars tickets available at comedybar.ca and december 30th i'm returning to thornhill for jokers comedy club I'm going to be at the corner all in between that. I'll probably be at Yuck Yucks at some point, somewhere in between that too. Uh, so make sure you follow my socials and uh, just stay tuned to more of this, this crazy contraption garbage thing that I call a podcast. I like it though, you know, and it's, it's, it's building up. Once again, a hello to all the new people. Uh, make sure you come back because then you are the beautiful people and then you're not just new people. You know what I mean? But again, we're not begging. Ah. Um, I did do some shows. So we can do a comedy recap. Uh, I haven't done this in a long time, but usually when I do solo episodes, I got the, the video game system set up here. And, um, you know, we just play something casual. You guys can just watch me fuck up a bunch. I got the mouse right on the screen like a professional. Give me a second. Wait a second. It's solo. I'm solo in the studio. Why the fuck won't the mouse move? What the fuck is this? Of course there's fuck ups now, bro. Why would there be fuck-ups any other time than now? Okay, I think I got rid of the mouse. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be playing Skate 2 uh, from the Xbox 360 PS3 era. That's right. Uh, I'm a nigga that likes skateboarding. What a shock. I live in Canada, so go fuck yourself. What more do you want from me? Black people skateboard too. Uh, should I turn down the audio? Oh, I actually landed that. Sketchy. Sketchy fucking Christ there. Okay. This is my first run. I haven't played Skate 2 since probably the last time. And there we go. I bailed. I will turn down the audio and I will make sure that I talk um, so that this isn't just a garbage. This, I don't want this to turn into a Twitch stream. You know what I mean? Now I'm just a crazy black guy playing skateboarding games. Who's even looking for that on Twitch? Who's looking for black people playing PS3, 360 era of skateboarding video games. Maybe one or two people. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'd actually like an audience. That would be nice, I think. Yeah, we do this. Might as well do it for something. Um, but I will be doing the comedy recap solo dolo this week. Most likely won't, won't be doing the uh, poll results. We'll see what the hell this episode is. Anytime I'm sick, it just turns into rambles for an hour. And at least that way you guys get something. And then I say that I did my job. This isn't even technically my job. This is free content, okay? So while you're sitting there being like, is this nigga really about to play a skateboarding video game that I've never heard about or haven't heard of since I was in high school? Well then, ladies and gentlemen, you are in the right place. Welcome to Black Suits, the podcast. I'm sick edition. <laughs> um, I had to cancel damn near all my shows, so might as well get into the comedy recap. This weekend... Pretty light for comedy shows. Although I did go to the corner on Thursday. Uh, I was I was 
not really showing any symptoms or anything. It wasn't until the next morning where I was really fucked up. Um, so I did get a set in that actually was really fucking hilarious. Uh, I enjoyed that set a lot. Um, Corner is damn near my home. So if you're ever in the Toronto area, they all the best comics in the city roll through there. So you really can't go wrong. They have shows literally, uh, what is it, like fucking Wednesday to Sunday, bro? Two days off, bro. Two days off. I don't even know if I'm going to play this video game because I feel like I'm distracted, okay? Um, so we did that. I had shows last weekend, too. I really should start writing this shit down because... I don't know. I guess I'm smoking more weed again. I don't know what's going on. Um, but yeah, I was supposed to be at Joker's this past Saturday, and I was supposed to be at SoCap Theater in Toronto on the Friday. And sadly, I had to cancel all those. I'm thankful, though, because like everybody right now is getting this flu bug. There's some sort of crazy flu going around, and I didn't get that. Or at least if I got that, I got a mild version of it because my body's not a bitch. <laughs> a lot of black seed oil, hemp seed oil, uh, chia seeds, a lot of probiotics. Uh, let's get on the fucking tea regiment right now, cause I'm a I'm a tea junkie, yo. We're spilling the tea right now. We got the African herbal remedy pack. Okay, you want you want to feel better? All right, this is this is the type of tea you brew. Get a pot, get a small tea kettle. All right, none of these fucking electric tea kettle shits, bro. Boil your water on the stove. Tea kettle, get some cinnamon sticks. Sticks, not cinnamon ground up. Get sticks, you simple bitch. <laughs> so get some cinnamon sticks, get cloves, okay? Okay, get cloves. Get raw ginger. You want the actual ginger root. Chop that shit up, okay? Uh, you And like even mince it. Like try and shred it and put it in there, okay? So you got ginger now. You got the honey. You need the honey, all right? Try and get organic if you can. Um, none of that fucking, that syrup shit that's literally just sugar. It's not even real honey. It's like, I don't even, I saw some crazy documentary years ago on Netflix that was literally all about honey. And apparently 90% of the honey on the store shelves is fake honey. Like it's not even honey. Um, so, you know, be on the lookout for that shit. Uh, so you got honey in there. You got ginger in there. You lemon, put some lemon in there. Squeeze a fucking, just squeeze the shit out of a lemon in there. So now you got honey, lemon, ginger, all right, classic. And then you got the cloves, and then you got the cinnamon sticks, all right? Now this is clutch, and you might hear this, and you might be like, what is this crazy African talking about? But let me promise you, first of all, you're not even going to taste this shit, all right? You will feel it because there's a kick, but you won't taste it, all right? Because you're going to hear me say what I'm saying next. And if you're not into the herbal remedies, then you're going to think I'm a crazy person. But the next two, cayenne pepper and turmeric. Yeah, that's right, my nigga. Cayenne pepper and turmeric. And if you're really bold, all the ingredients I just described, you can make into a shot. Okay? You can literally like, like make it into a little sludge in a shot glass, whip it up, and then dilute it in some water or some shit. I like it with tea. Um... But you could do that without the cinnamon and all that stuff. But, like, if you're going to boil the tea, you might as well get the cinnamon and the cloves and add the flavor and da 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 this. Um, so, yeah, that's what it is. Honey, lemon, ginger, uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba cloves, cinnamon sticks, turmeric, cayenne pepper. Uh, I was feeling pretty bad for one day. And, like, I was just... And then you you know what you do? You get a towel while you're boiling the tea. You might even want to put some mint in there. Maybe, but that might fuck up with, like, maybe not with the turmeric and, uh, uh, but up, up, up. Maybe not with the turmeric and the cayenne pepper. Maybe eucalyptus? Huh? Huh? Maybe? Huh? What? Huh? Um, but you get a towel, you put it over your head, uh, and then while the water is boiling and steaming, you just put, you put your head over the, the pot, and you let all, you just breathe in all the steam. <sighs> Yeah, I'm breathing on steam, man. I'm getting, I'm not sick no more. Yeah. By the way, if you're wondering what the, what, who am I? Who am I? Like, I'm just a nigga in Canada. This is how we act. Um, I thought I wanted to be a thug when I was young. And then I realized I'm a nigga in Canada. I don't have to be that. <laughs> so we goofy as shit up in this bitch. Um, I did a set at the corner, like I said. 
I did work on a bunch of new material, but mostly I'm working on the material that I want to cover at this one man show. I'm very excited, yo. I, uh, I'm very excited. Not only is this my only performance in the city of Hamilton, Ontario, where I started comedy, um, this is my first solo show at the Staircase Theater since I started comedy. I started comedy at the Staircase Theater. It's a legendary little local theater in the Hamilton area. Um, I started improv there, and then from improv, I did stand-up comedy, and from stand-up comedy, I never looked back. Uh, I, used to, I used to run out of there every week. But then eventually I moved away. Um, the theater opened and closed a bunch of times uh, prior to and since COVID. But apparently it's had the same owners, but just management has changed. So that's that's what I discovered. So all those times that my heart broke because I thought the place that I started comedy at was closing for good, it was never actually closed, which I'm happy about. Uh, but stop fucking with a nigga's heart. Um, so yeah, the Staircase Theater, very legendary spot, very legendary to to me, very close to my heart. Um, I'm, I've never done a solo show there. I started in a sketch troupe 13 years ago when I, before I um, really got heavy into comedy. When I was doing the improv and stuff, I was in a sketch troupe for a bit. I did improv for about, I don't know, I did it for months. I did it for about six months, maybe. On and off. So like half a year before I even did stand up. Which is crazy to me because I've always loved stand-up and not improv. The only reason I thought to do improv was, I mentioned this briefly, but I was in a car accident right before I started comedy. That's what actually gave me the time to sit down and focus on what I wanted to do. Even though I was in college already for animation, uh, I had already done college uh, once prior for broadcasting. It wasn't clicking, you know? I wasn't finding exactly what it is that I, I wanted out of life. <laughs> And then a car accident happened. I had a bunch of time off work. And what I was doing was watching shit. I was watching comedy nonstop, which is nothing new for me. My entire life has been watching comedy. But uh, I was watching Curb. That was the first time I really got into Curb Your Enthusiasm. I ended up buying all the box sets. I ended up buying a book, uh, like the Curb Your Enthusiasm book. It's a big hardcover. I still have it in my library. And um, it had a bunch of scripts from every season up until that point when the book came out. <laughs> And um, it had the breakdowns of the episodes and the seasons. And that's when I realized that that show was improvised. And that, like, it blew my mind. And that's also when I realized that I don't like Jerry Seinfeld. It's actually Larry David. No offense, but, like, Seinfeld is one of the least interesting characters in the show. Uh, let's be honest. You know what I mean? It's all about George and Kramer. And even I'd say, like, some of the supporting characters are even funnier. You know what I'm saying? Um, Seinfeld is obviously the glue but the very boring Jewish glue for that show. <laughs> not that all Jews are boring, but that dude kind of boring. What's the deal with airline peanuts? I'm like, eh, not for me. Um, and then I, so that's when I really realized, I'm like, oh, the character George is Larry David. Uh, half the show, if not more than half the show, uh, the, the funniest scenarios, the funniest scenes, the funniest dialogue was written by Larry David. And I got crazy into Curb Your Enthusiasm. I realized through that book that the show was improvised and I still didn't have to go back to work. And I was looking all around for where I could take improv lessons and the Staircase Theater popped up. So I went to the Staircase Theater for like six months, did a bunch of improv and just something wasn't clicking. As much as I was enjoying the improv, I'm like, this just doesn't feel right. If you've ever done, if you've never done improv, I should say it's a bunch of, like, depending on what level you're at, obviously, you know, like, um, it's just, you know, it's, it's improv, you know, it's a lot of like, hey, I'm an alien. Can I get a suggestion out of the crowd? Um, I, let me give me a color, an occupation, and then give me a location. And then someone will say purple, alien, uh, mechanic. And then it's like, okay, I will craft a scene where I'm a purple space alien mechanic. And then you do that. Or you do it with other people. And it's like, you know, it's fun. I, I don't want to shit on improv too much because I will shit on it a little bit. It's fun, but eh. it wasn't scratching that itch. And at the Staircase Theater at the time, a comedian by the name of Clifford Myers was running a weekly uh, comedy show. Not in the theater space where we did the improv, but in like the, the theater itself has multiple uh, areas. You know, there's the cabaret space, which is like a cafe with a stage. 
there's the theater space, there's the upstairs uh, performance area, and there's even like a, a an attached house where they do smaller uh, like one man performances out of. So uh, we were doing improv in the theater, and then in the cabaret space where the cafe is with the stage and all that stuff is where they were doing the weekly comedy show. I I think I went one time and just watched, and then I talked to Cliff, who told me to come out next week, and then he put me on. And I did stand up for the first time and I just never looked back. I immediately understood. Like there were so many different things that played out in my mind. It was, it was the fact of, oh shit, I finally found what it is that not I just want to do, but I'm meant to do. Um, I felt a little stupid because at that point I was 22 and I'm like, damn, bro, I've been watching Chappelle my entire life. And I've been knowing this guy started at like the age of 14 how did I not clue in? How am I watching George Carlin at the age of like 10 and 13 and not realizing it's like, oh, this is like, this, this is me, bro. Not necessarily I'm George Carlin, but I'm, I'm a comedian, bro. This is my essence. Uh, how did I not take in the fact that my entire life I was the class clown or the goofball or whatever the fuck? I always went for the laugh. How did I not take in the fact that, you know, I was a, I was a laugher, not a crier. You know, like I laugh through pain instead of cry through it. Um, like just not, I can't believe that all these things I already was, and I didn't clue in to the fact that, oh shit, do stand up, which I actually kind of think is a good thing. Cause nowadays motherfuckers be watching comedians and they're like, I can do that. I'm funnier than that. I can do that. I'm funny. That. And then you go up on stage and you eat shit. You eat shit. Or even worse, even worse, the fucking memers, the goddamn memers who think that because they got thousands of likes and followers and millions of fucking views on TikTok and Instagram from goofy shit where they go out into the streets and they're like, hey, dude, yo, you like sucking tits? Yo, what's the craziest sex experience you've ever had? Yo, or even or even worse, the scummiest, lowest of the low memers, the fucking people that bother families when they're trying to shop, trying to grocery shop to feed their kids. They go into the fucking store and follow them around with a cardboard paper roll and go right into their ear. <laughs> Isn't this the funniest, most comedic shit ever? <coughs> Losers, bro. Comedic zeros, bro. Zeros. They think roundhouse kicking somebody's wife in the head is content. Sure, I laugh. <laughs> but I laugh for five seconds. When you go up on a stage with a spotlight and a microphone and people have paid... Because don't forget, you get away with that garbage because nobody pays for your shit. They scroll past it. They watch it. They laugh for five seconds. Maybe they share it and they forget about you because you're forgettable because your stuff doesn't last. It doesn't actually have any type of quality to it. You understand what I'm saying here? You memers suck. And a lot of you memers now think you're comedians. And then I, I love it. I love it. Show up to a comedy club. Let me find out you're a memer and I will fucking make you sweat. Because I'm a comic. Bitch. Ass nigga. Loser. Fucking memer. Be a doctor. Fuck, bro. Like, shit. Comedy is really the only avenue where people really respect the, the craft. Maybe. Uh, no, nah, I don't want to say that. No, nah, I don't want to say that because like improvisers respect and all that shit. It's just that comedians don't respect improv. <laughs> ah, but I'll respect an improv person over a memer. Get out of here, bro. And this doesn't include comedians that pivot to do stuff on social media. I'm talking about people that do stuff on social media and think they can show up on a comedy stage. You suck. You suck. You are fucking garbage. That shit doesn't translate. There's actual so much proof 
as much as I shit talk just for laughs, actually, this is another reason. Because they hired a memer to host the gala a couple of years ago. These idiots, bro. This is what they this is what they think comedy is. They hired a social media personality to host a stand-up comedy gala, okay? And when I tell you how the the word spread throughout the Canadian comedy community so fast, and how this guy bombed so hard and ate so much shit, and how every comedian rejoiced because it's like, see, you fucking losers. You are not funny. You are not funny in any context where funny actually is judged in a proper scale. Social media is not where funny is judged in a proper scale. Social media is where people scroll. Their brains are turned off. So they'll laugh at some really dumb shit because guess what? They just saw like a titty photo, uh, a baby falling and hitting their head, a skateboarder breaking their leg, Palestine, 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 Palestine. Oh, there's you, Chupapi Munyanyo. Who gives a fuck? Brain mush. Brain mush. Contributing nothing. <laughs> Holy fuck. Anyways, you know, there's a classic old Black Zeus rant for you. Um, anyways, I guess this is all talking about the Staircase Theater. I don't know how I got there, but I usually get there, especially when Dante's not in the studio to just be like, yo, nigga, calm down. <laughs> but I will be back at the Staircase Theater. I'm very excited. Um, so much time has passed. Like, literally, I started I started there 13 years ago. Like, the comic I am now is the comic that I dreamed of being when I started there. That's why I'm excited to go back. Because I put on performances there, but all the ones I've done have been joint, uh, like, collaborative uh, performances. Like, with my sketch troupe when I first started. We did three live sketch shows. And they were, like, an hour to an hour and a half each. Some of them were just our sketch troupe. Some of them were combined. We combined with uh, another group that we were friends with. Um, but I've never done a solo comedy show there. When I recorded my comedy special in Hamilton a year ago, uh, that was at the Zoetic Theater, which is actually bigger. And I've, I've performed there a couple times, but not, like that was amazing. And I, I'm going to be doing more stuff at the Zoetic too eventually, but I want to have something more regular at the Staircase and then build up to something bigger at the Zoetic. So Inside Scoop, if you're listening to the podcast... Thank you, by the way, for listening to the podcast. You are the beautiful people of the podcast. Uh, make sure you subscribe and hit the like. Leave a comment. I'm not begging. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that that's a good comedy recap, you know. Um, I wanted to jump back into the... Uh, you know, I don't even want to say, I don't want to phrase it like that. I wanted to go back to covering the Diddy stuff again because there's a lot more revelations. But I'll wait for Dante to come back into the studio to do that. We will keep up on the Diddy Watch. Diddy Watch 2023. Dun, 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 dun. This nigga's a rapist. Um, so we'll do that. I probably won't even do the poll results, honestly, because I'm like the fun of that is having the the dialogue, the back and forth, the the debate. Uh, with Dante and seeing what you guys vote on the weekly polls there. Maybe I'll get back into escape for two seconds and uh, try and pull off a massive trick or something. But yeah, I hope you guys have been good. You know, like not too much has been going on. It's been a mild winter so far. Uh, we had our first snowfall here uh, in the Toronto Hamilton area. And I don't even want to call it a snowfall because that shit melted so fast. And I'm grateful. Apparently they're saying it's going to be a milder winter. Who knows, bro? Um, I definitely got sick, but also I didn't get sick the way everybody else is getting sick. So I'm grateful for that. Yeah, maybe I'll just, yo, maybe this is it, yo. Maybe this is it. Sometimes it's better to just leave things where they are. We talk comedy, which is the important thing. This is a comedy podcast. There's no Dante's Inferno, obviously, this week because there's no Dante. Um, why would I cover UFC when I got professional casual takes? And I'm not a Twitch guy, so why would I continue to sit here and play video games poorly while trying to concentrate on two different things, right? Like, I, I'm thinking of you guys, you know? And this is free. Should I really feel bad for giving you guys free stuff if it's a little shorter this week? Will you hate me? Will you unsubscribe? Will you not come back next week if this is the case? What if I tell you we come back next week and it's stronger? What if I say that? What if I make you a promise that next week's episode will be crazy? It will be probably, but I can't guarantee it. Uh, <laughs> no, but we will be covering all the, I have a, I have a ton of shows this week. So 
and it will be after my my show, Comedy Villain, uh, A Night with Black Zeus, featuring Jesse Singh, The Staircase Theater, Friday, December 8th, $20 tickets, Eventbrite. Tickets available now. Um, yeah, bro, I think this is I. Yo, I, I showed up, bro. I showed up. I showed up. Yo, I'm that guy that's sick and shows up at work, but tells everybody else to stay home because I'm sick. All right? And you can only do that when you're the boss. <laughs> Otherwise, you're the one staying home and everybody else is getting paid. <laughs> I don't even want to talk too much. Like, well, I'm just going to be sitting here going like this. Uh, nobody wants to hear that shit. I, I feel like I did have more than I wanted to talk about. But, like, how long has this been? If I went at least 20 minutes, I think I'm good. Give me give me two seconds. Let's find out. If it hasn't been 20 minutes, then, then we'll figure something out. You know what I mean? But if so, this is over. Can you hear me still? Can you hear me in the background? Can you hear me? Yo, are you crazy right now? You guys got a full 30 minutes from me, yo. You got a full 30 minute episode just me talking about comedy, telling you where I got my start, how I got my start, telling you about the car accident, the improv, the staircase. You know what I'm saying? It's tough. It's tough to want to do this shit when you're sick. I just want to go uh, sit down and drink some tea and like... I want to I wanna just lay up next to a woman and just put my head right on her breasts. Just, just ever so, you know what I mean? Just Let me just lay up on a titty real quick and maybe suck on it a little bit. Um, that was a crazy turn. That was a crazy turn. There was nothing sexual about this entire episode. Then BAM! Put a titty in my mouth. <laughs> when I tell you... The best episodes, it's either too hot in the studio, I'm sick, or one of the other things I said at the beginning of this shit. <laughs> best, best version of me, I'm delirious, I'm just, I'm riding, I'm riding that fever fucking energy, you know what I mean? Um, but again, I'm on the other side of it, so I'm not really feeling sick, but I am feeling like I want to relax, maybe go read a book. All of a sudden, I went from titties to books. What the fuck? <laughs> What the fuck? Oh, you know what I have been doing? Because you know what you do when you're sick, yo. Remember when you were young? Especially if you're North America, like uh, America or um, Canada. Because I don't know what you watched uh, in other countries growing up. But if you were sick growing up in Canada or the U.S., what you did was stay home from school. You watched Price is Right. You watched Judge Judy. You watched Mari Povich. You watched The Simpsons reruns. You watched... Um, Jerry Spring, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Like, what a classic. Classic, uh, classic, I'm faking sick so I could stay home and watch Price is Right. Something about the Price is Right. Like, what the fuck? It was, a, it was just an advertisement. The whole show was an advertisement, but I think it was all the flashing lights and that stupid little thin microphone that Bob Barker used to use. Now it's Drew Carey. How old are you? Do you remember fat Drew Carey? Do you even remember Bob Barker? Do you know about the microphone? What about Judge Judy? Did you ever see that episode of Atlanta where they said that Judge Judy has a nice ass? I really thought about that. Did you? This episode is losing. This, this episode is going downhill so fast. <laughs> ah, yo. All right, fuck it, nigga. Let's see. I'm going to do one good trick and get out of here. That's it. That's how I'm going to wrap this. We're going to have one good run. I'm going to go from the beginning of this to the end of this track, and we're going to call it a day. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for showing up. I'm going to restart that because that was a bad start. Okay, that was a bad start. But I thank you for showing up once again. This has been Black Suits, the podcast, season four, episode 43. This is going to be like, is this going to be mid, or can I pull off a crazy performance Ooh, that was nice that was nice yeah all right all right all right ladies and gentlemen we will be back here next wednesday as always with another episode of black suits the podcast um dante will be back in the studio i won't be sick we'll be covering comedy we'll be talking about a bunch oh you piece of shit 
Fuck you. Come on. That was an NPC. That was the computer. That was a perfect clean run. Sure, the tricks weren't that great. Do I have to do it again? All right, fuck it. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Black Seuss the Podcast, season four, episode 43. God damn it. <laughs> All right, one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Black Seuss the Podcast, season four, episode 43. This is not going to be good. One more time. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I think I just had a booger come on my nose. You know what? Fuck this shit. <laughs> this has been Black Zeus the Podcast, season four, episode 43. We'll be back next Wednesday, as always, on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts with a brand new, fresh episode recapping the week of comedy and life. Black Zeus the Podcast, season four, episode 43. I have been Black Zeus. <laughs> Shout out to you, the beautiful people. I'm sick and gonna go fucking blow my nose and then drink some tea. Why won't I leave? I haven't left yet. I'm still here. Oh my God. I love you. Hit the subscribe. Leave a comment. Hit the like button. I'm not begging. I'm not begging. Guy, right, peace. Love y'all.